It's not just the smartphones that are getting more and more boring, but those earbuds are also getting more and more boring. I looked at the Apple AirPods Pro 3 and they look the same. World's best ANC, I don't know. So I'm actually pretty excited to reveal design refresh for the Air 3. Obviously we had Air 1, Air 2, and then we changed things to just have it being called Air. Why this is Air 3 and not Air 4? Like, what's the story with uh, what happened here? Yeah, I think we've really held ourselves back. So in hindsight, that was a mistake and there's a fire alarm here. We'll just make an assessment of whether we need to leave the building. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Nothing TV. Today, I'm excited to be joined once again by Carl, and we're going to be sharing some new product information with you today. Carl, how's it going? I'm good. How's it going? So at the time of recording yesterday, Apple just wrapped up another one of their events. Just wondered, obviously, they announced their next generation of AirPods Pro. How's it feeling with such similar kind of launch timelines for our kind of flagship TWS product? Yeah, I feel good. I mean, I think this time around, how should I put it? You know, on one hand, it's good to be consistent. And we have been pretty consistent since 2021 when we released our first pair of earbuds, the Ear One. And the consistency and the repetition when it comes to the design language really helps solidify an image for our product, an icon for our product. But it's also nice to switch it up now and then. And I think we are finally switching up the design of our earbuds. Rather than talking about Apple, let's get into a little bit about nothing. People always seem to want the latest. There's a fire alarm here. Oh, I can't hear it at all. Oh, that's good. Um, Carl, we'll just make an assessment of whether we need to leave the building. I think we might have to. Okay, should we stop? Eventually. You can hear the alarm through the earbuds. Zero, and you're not even using super mic, huh? No, very impressed. Carl, I don't know if you were able to share with us, but what's the market response been to our first two flagship products from this year in the Phone 3 and Headphone 1? It's been a great year so far. Um, knock on wood that we continue the trajectory towards the end of the year, but we're doubling in size this year compared to last year. So I'm pretty happy about the rate of progress. All right, all sounding very positive. Before we get into Air 3, I wonder if you could just kind of give us a recap about how we think about the TWS category since, you know, we've made quite a few of these at this point. I mean, the true wireless category was the first category of products that we ever made. So it's always been a part of our DNA and every year we have been improving our capabilities. I think now we have one of the strongest acoustics teams in the TWS category and the sound quality has you know, kept improving for generation after generation. I mean, this is probably what we're best at, like this and smartphones. It's really exciting to release our fourth generation, the year three. It is the best we, we've we ever made so far. And I think apart from just having like the expected features, I'm really happy about the special thing that we did this time around. Totally. We'll be getting into that in a second. But before we get there, I wonder if you can just tell me about the naming. I know you've seen a lot of comments. Obviously, we had Ear 1, Ear 2, and then we changed things to just have it being called Ear. There's been a lot of questions around why this is Ear 3 and not Ear 4. Like, what's the story with uh, what happened here? Yeah, I think we addressed this in a different video, right? But basically, because the true wireless form factor didn't need an upgrade as frequent as with the smartphone like category, I felt like maybe we don't need to, you know, add to the numbers every single year. And it could be more like a car, you know, the, a car model um, will be called the same car model, but the only difference would be the year it got refreshed. But that led to a lot of confusion because when people were searching online for the product, they got all types of responses because it didn't specify the model number. So in hindsight, that was a mistake and uh, we're just flipping back to how things used to be. It's more clear. Yeah, let's just call it the third generation and turn the page from now on. That sounds good to me. And I think for most people's brains, bigger number means newer and better, right? So yeah, for sure. And I just wanted to touch on the fact that I feel like the reviews for Ear and Ear A were so popular. They were so positive almost at the time. I think they could almost be considered feature complete. So with products that were already so successful and so loved, you know, how do we approach what this next generation should be? Like, where does the thinking really begin when you have kind of ticked all the boxes with the previous generation? For the Ear 3, we really wanted to look at the materials that we're using and also try and innovate on this category because it's not just the smartphones that are getting more and more boring, but wireless earbuds are also getting more and more boring. Like the features are all the same. We just try to push along those two lines. For instance, on the material side, all the nothing earbuds so far have been plastic. And we were thinking like, how do we really make it more premium? Uh, you're right, the Ear and Ear A are really good products that are loved by consumers. A lot of people buy them still to, to this day. We sell a lot every single day, but we're never satisfied with where we are at nothing. We always want to make things better. And for the Ear 3, we were thinking of, you know, how can we 
really elevate the, the feeling of the product through material use and design. And in some of the launch teasers on social media, we've seen a few references to Supermic. Now, I wonder if you can explain to us kind of what this is and what sort of problem we're trying to solve with it. I mean, the issue with wireless earbuds is that you have them in your ear and it's quite a distance between your ear and your mouth. Like it doesn't get enough signal to really be able to perfectly filter out what you're trying to say and what's in the, in the background. So we didn't do anything magical with the case on the Ear 3, but we simply put two high quality microphones in the charging case and used beam forming technology to help filter out the ambient noise and help you focus in on your voice when you have the super mic on. I mean, we already made a lot of improvements on the mic and the earbuds themselves. Like when you had your fire alarm, I couldn't hear it, but in those really, really noisy environments, like at close to 100 decibels of noise, say you're on the tube or you're in a pub and you still have to speak to some people, you can hold the talk button on the side of the case and just speak into the case and your voice will be crystal clear. So the idea is that you basically just hold the case to your mouth and then benefit from improved mic quality. Yeah, why don't we swap to super mic now? Tap and hold when you're speaking into the mic and whenever you're done speaking, you can release it. It's like a walkie talkie, very easy to use. Okay, whose idea was it to test super mic in a really quiet room? How about we head outside into the mean streets of London and try Supermic in some more challenging environments? Here we are at a popular fitness restaurant in the UK. And uh, now I'll sort over to the Supermic. So you can appreciate how crystal clear my voice is. Here's another example of Supermic getting rid of background noise. As you can tell, it's focusing right in on my voice and you can't hear that motorbike at all. Hopefully. Oh wow, here we are on the underground. And here I am speaking through the Supermic which I'm sure you can hear my voice just fine. Yeah, I really like using the double press to kind of hold it, especially if you're in a longer pool like this. Super convenient not to have to hold it down, but yeah. Mm -hmm. it's nice to have a really big bright indicator so you know it's working. All right, should we swap back to the other mics now? All right. So I guess my question becomes like, if we're so excited about this mic in the case, wouldn't people just use it all the time rather than the mics on their earbuds? Sure, the super mic will be really useful in some conditions, but in everyday use, we've also really improved the microphones on the Ear 3. It's actually now super advanced and for us these two modes, different modes, are to give people more choice in how they use the product. Each earbud now has three directional microphones and a bone conduction voice pickup unit, meaning that it basically senses the micro vibrations in your jaw and ear canal and is then able to distinguish uh, what you're actually saying and other noise like wind and other environmental noise, which means the, your voice will become even clearer than in the previous gen nothing ear. This is all sounding really exciting, um, but I know there's also been like a bunch of other improvements to Ear 3, so I just wonder if you can tell us about some of the other features or elements that you're excited about. Yeah, sound quality has really improved. We've increased the size of the driver, for one. It's one millimeter larger than the previous gen. It's now at 12 millimeters. The bass response is better. We've improved the treble and distortion has also been reduced. So we have improvements across the board. And just like before, we have high-res audio certifications, LDAC, so these sound really Great, but you know, with sound quality, we really need to put it into the hands or rather put it into the ears of our users and you know, get the first hand feedback. And with Headphone One earlier this year, we also had like quite a few new interesting features added that you can control through Nothing X. So, have any of these new features made their way over to Ear 3 as well? Yeah, actually, um, one of the features that have made its way to the Ear 3 from the Headphone One is Adaptive ANC. It basically keeps checking your surrounding and uh, will adapt the ANC mode if it feels the need to. I think it checks the surroundings something like 600 times a second. So with the Headphone One, we also included dynamic spatial audio, and we brought a similar feature to the Ear 3, um, static spatial audio. So it's the first time we bring it to our wireless earbuds, and it basically creates a 360-degree soundscape. So there's some nice upgrades here. Sorry, Carl, don't mean to cut you off, but in this next section, I'm speaking to one of our industrial designers about Ear 3. Frank, welcome to Nothing TV. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Why don't we kick things off with a quick intro from yourself? Sure. So I'm Frank. I'm an industrial designer on the Nothing Design team. I'm one of the mem members that brought Ear 3 to life. Really excited to get into the kind of ID story. We've covered all of the specs and features of Carl earlier in the video, but maybe you can start by telling us a bit about what some of the inspirations were for Ear 3 when you kind of got started working on it. My first project was the Ear A. So from that, we sort of like had to learn what the Air 1 and Air 2 was and what kind of decisions they, they had to make. And we started thinking about all the things that we wanted to improve and make better. So a lot of the ideas sort of like just quite naturally came and we're always thinking about how to stay one step ahead and bring new and exciting stuff forward to the next generation product. 
Am I right in saying that when you finish one generation of a product, there's always kind of a little list of things you maybe wish you could have done in that particular generation that then kind of moves on to the future? Editions? Yeah, definitely. Like during the projects, there's like things that sort of like come to you quite late when when the product is already formed or things that you wish you could have done. And some of the ideas sort of like definitely went into the year three. Can you give any examples of some of those ideas that didn't make it to ear that then you were excited to kick off with ear three? Definitely like the super mic. That was an idea that we sort of had around, I think maybe just after ear A, just when ear has finished. And it sort of like really came from real life scenarios where we wanted to have better voice quality when you're on calls. Um, if you wanted to have like a private conversation in like a public environment, and that definitely felt like it was something that was really exciting to bring to a flagship product. Totally. And the thing that kind of blew my mind when I first saw it 3 was, we've got all this extra functionality in the charge case, but the footprint is, is it smaller or is it the same as? It's exactly the same as Ear 2 and Ear. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was like a great sort of like collaboration between the ID as well as the engineering team. Well, I think everyone had the same sort of like shared goal. It's it's like an improvement. If it became bigger, then we felt like it sort of like was a step backwards. That's sort of like why we decided to change the exterior and interior for, well, like redesign the case completely to be able to pack the super mic, the talk button, mm. the antenna island, rejig everything and fit everything in with the same package. Another idea I've been hearing a lot about is the antenna in the earbuds. What's the story there? Was this another one of these ideas that you wish you'd done in previous generations or is it kind of a new idea for Ear3? Well, weirdly, that was an idea that we sort of like drew up because we sort of like really like seeing functional components underneath the transparent components. And a lot of it came from learnings from the phone. The way that our phone one, two and three works is that the antenna is embedded with the metal midframe. Mm. And how Ear A was is that the antenna was actually this really thin piece of material that gets stuck behind the antenna bracket, which is the thing that the users can see. Right. So using that idea, we thought about, is it possible to do something similar to phone and combine the two components together? And it was something that it worked and it ended up being a component that you can see that's functional instead of being underneath something that's like an appearance or a cosmetic thing. And another part about this particular element of the device is the shape. Mm -hmm. I think with Ear 3, we're seeing a lot more kind of curved shapes. I think you referred to them as racetracks before. Yes. What's the kind of thinking behind this? For me, it kind of seems like a softening almost. Yeah, I think it's from like collectively using the products, we always kind of think about whether it's possible to improve it. And we refer back to like the way that phone two evolved into phone three, where everything became like quite ordered and following like a certain grid. Mm. So we try to do the same thing with, from ear two to ear three, where it starts following like a more complete geometric shape. And that front read of like the two racetrack shapes, it's something that we felt was quite iconic and felt very pure. And that then evolved into like changing the, the racetrack shape of the entire earbud itself. Everything became a little bit softer, felt a little bit more grown up. Yeah, definitely. And then on the use of materials, obviously we've covered the Y for the internal antenna, but we're bringing metal to the charge case as well. Yeah. What was the kind of rationale for this? Because I think visually it's the biggest kind of change we've seen in our TWS lineup versus mm. previous generations. So yeah, how did the team approach implementing metal and what was the what was the why? So metal has always been the material that we've used since even on ear one and ear two with the hinge. Mm. And it's very apparent in our sort of like phone phone lineup. I think at the time we're doing also headphone one as well, as well as other team members thinking about phone three. It's sort of like tied in very well with the entire range of like creating this cohesive language across the across the products. And secondly, like metal's always been like a material that really fascinates us. The kind of like precision that you get, the pristineness, something that feels sort of like cold to the touch. It's similar to the way that you sort of like the first thing that you touch on the headphones is that like cold to touch feeling, which feels really nice. And we wanted to bring that into the earbuds case as well. And also it was just really nice. <laughs> yeah, totally. But you've also been able to kind of maintain what people know our products for, which is the transparency. So mm. there's obviously like a pretty nice kind of 50-50 ratio from the side. But yeah. how did you approach, firstly, how metal to go? Like, because I'm assuming it, this could have all been metal, including the lid. But mm. like, what was the right balance? And how did you kind of have those conversations? Kind of like looking back from 
Air 1, Air 2, and Air A. When you look at the product from like the top view down, you can completely see through the entire thing. And that's what we wanted to keep. I think there's a lot of other products out there that has like half transparent and half something else. It just feels like it's missing something. And I think what it's missing is really just sort of like that completely see-throughness, which is what we try to like maintain with these transparent wells, which is something that we love on the year two. Yeah, I remember a lot of the ID team members were super excited about where the earbuds slot in because they kind of augment the light shining through. So yeah. it's cool that we're able to keep hold of that. Yeah, the refraction when you, that you get is really cool. Yeah. And then onto the controls. So obviously now we've got a microphone, an LED, we've got a talk button, we've also got a lanyard loop. Yes. Lots of new ideas to implement. How do you go about kind of celebrating them enough and making them kind of easy to operate versus mm. like being distracting? In the studio, there's hundreds of different prototypes of like different shapes of the microphone island different finishes of the talk button. We've got like so many different iterations of like how much it should step. But I think a lot of the learnings is like the whole team together from doing phones and earbuds as well. Like we've introduced the um, polish button on the phone 3A series. Mm -hmm. And then that felt like it was something that it could tie the entire range together. So when we're thinking about a product, it's not just about one product, it's about also coherency with the rest of the family. It needs like trial and error. We, we do lots of different testing before knowing that this feels and is right. And that's what it takes an entire team to do so. The bottom of the stem is slightly more rounded. I think I remember seeing that the overall size of the buds has gotten smaller. Were there any challenges involved in this? Because my understanding is the battery life should be as good as the last generation despite being somewhat miniaturized. The driver battery increased in comparison to ear and we're able to add a bigger battery into the earbuds, into the opaque section, and make the, the overall size of it a bit smaller. And that's because we always wanted to keep improving on the ergonomics of it. Yeah, but there were definitely a lot of challenges when we when we looked into this, sort of like repositioning the components, thinning out the certain wall sections. The engineers done a really good job on doing so. Frank, this was super fun, interesting. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing a bit more on the design story. Thanks for having me. So there you have it, pricing and availability on screen now. And for those of you who want to learn even more about Ear3, head on over to nothing.tech. See you in the next one.